Welcome back to Vampire. We just saved Dr. Swansea, who's being held at the uh, Doris Fletcher's acting school. Just saved them by embracing them. Well, actually, no, embracing's killing. We saved them by turning them into a vampire. And also got some answers about the source of the infection. As it turns out, it's because Dr. Swansea secretly fed Lady Ashbury's blood to Harriet Jones as an attempt to treat her. But instead, it turned them into an ichor and started spreading the disease. So yeah, great job, Dr. Swansea. Next thing we need to do is, well, prepare to fight the disaster is the overarching thing, but for now we need to talk to Lady Ashbury. So Harriet Jones became the original carrier when Edgar gave her vampire blood. Stupid I must tell Elizabeth. Yeah. They're not Over worth there. my time. There's one of them What good fortune brings you back to me, Jonathan? What is it, my dear? I'm afraid it's bad news, Elizabeth. The worst, actually. Please, speak up. Edgar is no longer in McCullum's grasp. I resolved that matter. Where is our good friend now? Is he well? Of a sort. His injuries were mortal. I had no choice but to make him one of us. To save him. Or to punish him. To punish him? I fail to understand. And what is the source of this cold tone in your voice? Edgar Swansea was responsible for the Skull epidemic, Elizabeth. It was he who unleashed the deadly scourge upon London. What? Are you certain? This is the most terrible accusation of all. He confessed everything to me. He sought to cure the disease, to exploit vampire blood to stop the epidemic, but he unwittingly gave birth to a catastrophe. All those poor victims. How could he do it? What happened? Edgar gave no heed to ethics. His theory could have been proven to be correct, but he abused the confidence of his patients to test it. I must say I'm shocked, Jonathan. Who would have thought it? And the poor patient. Let me guess. It was Harriet Jones, was it not? Yes. That explains how Doris Fletcher was infected, and how she became an i -Corps. She secretly visited her mother at Pembroke. Then we have no choice. We must act quickly, Jonathan. We must return to the sewers and put an end to the threat poor Harriet embodies. I have one more matter to discuss with you. Harriet Jones was the primary case, but... Do you know what a healthy carrier is? There is a tone in your voice that frightens me, Jonathan. What are you trying to say? It was your blood Edgar used for his experiment on Harriet Jones. What? No. No. This can't be. Oh, God. Elizabeth. Are you all right? Uh, no, I have to go. What do you mean? Leave me alone. Save the city, Jonathan. Save what can be saved. Elizabeth, I need answers. Why did your blood Stay cause Stay away this? from me. Please. I swear I never was your Wait. enemy. Wait. No. Elizabeth. Gather the ingredients for the antidote. Yeah, um, Lady Ashbury's reaction. I mean, I wouldn't expect anybody to react well to the news that their blood was not only used without their knowledge to cause something like this, albeit accidentally, but also that they're a healthy carrier, or whatever Jonathan said, that their blood is tainted, basically. It's poison. But the way she reacted seemed a little bit more than just disgust at that. It, it seems like there's something that maybe they should tell me. Something that they've just realized about their past or something. I don't know. But I feel like there's more to it than just they're disturbed that their blood is poison. So obtain drop of William Marshall's blood from Lord Redgrave. Obtain drop of King Arthur's blood from Geoffrey McCollum. Search for insulin in the old morgue of the Pembroke Hospital. 
Okay, so we're actually going to gather all the ingredients for an antidote. Cool, so we got to visit all these people, I guess. Talk with them, fight them. Probably going to fight Lord Redgrave. Probably won't have to fight um, Jeffrey McCollum, since they're now my progeny. Now would be a good time to blend the recipe Marshall used when he fought the disaster. I think I know where to find what I need. I feel like we're near the end of the game, so I definitely want to focus on side quests before I continue with the main quest. Although if I'm in the area, I guess I might as well do some of these since doing one of them isn't going to end the game or anything like that. Also, apparently, Jeffrey McCollum is at the cemetery? I wonder why. Because Insulin must be here by the hospital, and Redgrave is, of course, at the Ascalon Club. So this has got to be Jeffrey. First side quest I want to do is Pandora's Box. I want to find Usher Talltree's lost journal, or not lost, but stolen journal. And I want to disobey their orders and read it. I definitely want to read it. Sounds like it contains a good mystery, if they didn't want me to read it. So I was able to go inside of this door that before J Jonathan would always say, I will return at a more convenient time. This time they didn't say that, and I was actually let inside, and it turns out it's actually a door to Doris Fletcher's acting school. Didn't realize that. So it says find the safe's key. I don't know what safe that is, but uh, I guess I'll just explore this place thoroughly. There's some guards of pre-wind down here. I have it. I can now open the box. Oh, it's just on one of the normal enemies. I still don't know what the box is, but it's somewhere here. Ah, it's this safe. I remember I needed to get the key for that a while ago, didn't I? Huh. I guess I just forgot about it or something. I really don't know if I should read this. Oh, I, I really know that I should. Personal notebook. Okay. It's a long one. 8th of January, 1918. The cards worry me, for they keep on announcing the coming of an imprecise but terrible danger, distinct from this awful war. I better call back the legates to London and tell them to observe and report any unusual events. 15th of March. Something is definitely going on. The cards keep hiding what is approaching, and that can only mean something powerful is moving. Something so strong and potent, the cards cannot fully reveal its nature. All the legates, but one, are back in London. His mission in Lhasa is too crucial to be aborted. The only noticeable event is the frequent meetings between Aloysius Dawson and the Ascalon Club. It's nothing to worry about, for now. 24th of July. A terrible epidemic is upon us, and I don't like this at all. My legates have been sent back overseas to protect them from the disease, but also to find any clue about the origin of the plague. I'm not totally convinced this is all natural. In the past, we had many cases of vampire activity linked with sudden epidemics. We must remain vigilant. 17th of August. All over the world, hundreds of thousands dead, broken families, despair and affliction deeply rooted in our hearts. The epidemic is a curse. Reports from every country tell me this catastrophe has no boundaries, no limits. The good news is that the disease seems to have withdrawn. The bad news is the cards keep on foreseeing a calamity. 19th of September. Cards were right from the beginning. A calamity is upon us. The best sign may be the return of the guard Prewin. Geoffrey McCollum himself is back in London. He is actively inquiring and recruiting members for a new campaign. Whatever I may think of McCollum's methods, I must admit he has a good nose for danger. We must all stay alert. 21st of September. McCollum did not waste any time. At least three of his warhounds have been ordered to survey me. Same old hate, same old methods once again. They will inquire about all my moves, all my acquaintances, and all my actions. I know they are convinced I am an immortal plotting against them, against humanity. Stupid hunters. I have no time for this. I may have my secrets, but I am not the conspiring foe thereafter. But they are right about something. The cataclysm will not be avoided. 15th of October. For the second time since I am the primate of St. Paul, I fear for the city. Skulls are invading London and the entire country. No, not, not invading. They're already here. They are among us, released by the flesh of the many infected. Observers of the Brotherhood tell me that foreign vampires are arriving from all over Europe, delighted to get their share of innocent and suffering flesh. 
This country as we know it may be on the verge of oblivion. We still don't know what is maneuvering against us. 26th of October. The guards are still worrying me, as if the real danger was not revealed yet. I am convinced that the Guard of Prewin is about to launch a second great hunt. This is the only explanation to the patterns of activities deployed by McCollum. Control of strategic command posts all over the city, creation of many new weapons, robbery, to quickly finance this expensive undertaking. I know my name will be on the list if they decide to hunt down all identified vampires in England, but I refuse to submit to this threat. 7th of November. A pre-win attack is imminent. Scouts and patrols are getting closer every night. I can't even blame them, for the situation is critical. A few reports even claim the horned vampire may be back. But their blindness never ceases to astonish me. How can they keep considering me a foe? Have I not proved I am their ally? Have I not done all I can to protect mortals? This is my last entry in this journal. May God have mercy on our souls? Question mark? <laughs> Why is there a question mark there? Two things of note. First thing to note, um, a few reports even claim the Horned Vampire may be back. Horned Vampire is the one that we've been seeing in our visions. The one that's just all red. The one that's probably my maker. But the other thing is, what's the big secret? Why was I supposed to not read this? It's mostly just stuff we already kind of knew. Just a timeline of how things got shittier and shittier and guard a pre-win and their second great hunt and all that and yeah, we kind of all knew, knew that already. I can't believe it. Believe what? I, I don't get it. Believe what? What's the big revelation? Okay, let's confront Usher Talltree about Something. I don't know what. Good evening. I found your notebook. The one the guard of Prewin stole from you. And you've brought it back to me. That's excellent news, Jonathan. Were you able to keep yourself from reading it? <laughs> no. Ah, the oldest temptation of all. If Pandora herself did not pass the test, I suppose I should not blame you for your curiosity. So you're not angry with me? Why should I be? To live is to make choices, Jonathan. And you made yours. Now give it to me, please. So there is no revelation? I did What? I don't understand. Why was Jonathan all like, oh my god? Are you a vampire? I mean, the journal didn't say anything about them being a vampire. We know, we knew, and still know, and already knew, and... I don't know what I'm trying to say there, but we already knew that um, Usher Taltry was suspected of being a vampire by the guard of Prewin, but that's a load of nonsense, I'm pretty sure. I don't think the journal really said anything more about that. Tell me the truth, Usher. Are you a vampire? By the stole, you really thought you could force Usher Talltree to yield to your little mind tricks like an oblivious mortal? So, are you or are you not a vampire? As a brilliant man once said, to be unambiguous could only be to one's own detriment. Why can't I force you to answer me then? I'm the primate of St. Paul's Stole. It comes with certain advantages, like accessing the greatest library in the country, and avoiding answering certain questions. Is that it? Goodbye, sir. I rarely wander. Guards never lie, but they are never okay. easy to read. Okay. That, that was a weird quest. That felt utterly pointless. How strange. Let's also talk with Charles Albright about the fact that they were apparently the lead investigator on a case. If you remember the note we saw a while ago, or I think it was a newspaper article. The lead investigator on a case where they basically seem to have sentenced to death and killed somebody for a crime they probably didn't commit. What's up with that, Albright? Is it true you were dropped in rank? Tell me about it. Yes, it is. I made a terrible mistake. 
I deserved it. Sometimes I think I should have resigned. So why are you still working here? Because I'm a damn fine copper. I just don't want to have someone innocent hung again by mistake because of me. The death penalty is a great shame. I agree. I'm convinced all civilized nations should abolish the death penalty. Maybe after the war, once that bloodshed is over, the survivors will change that. Why do you think there shouldn't be a death penalty? I believe no one should decide to take a man's life. Not a nation or a government. Are you a pacifist, Inspector? No, sir. But I believe in divine justice. Only God has the right to decide who will live and who must die. What? Are you, what? I, what? I don't... Okay, nothing more about that. So... That's it? I... It wasn't a harmless mistake that they got somebody convicted. It, the newspaper article made it sound like it was a very strange case. It was strange how Scotland Yard and the investigator seems to have railroaded like the whole case into executing this person despite a glaring lack of evidence that was obvious even to the people writing the article for the newspaper. It wasn't just an innocent mistake. It sounds like they deliberately tried to kill this person, knowing that there was no good evidence. So I don't know why they seem so like, whoopsie, sorry. And also you deserve to be demoted. You deserve a lot more than just to be demoted for literally murdering someone. I don't like you. I like that you're against the death penalty, but I don't like you. They're worth a lot of XP. Oh, right. And I am maxed on mesmerized level too. Still though, I feel powerful enough and I know that it really destabilizes a district to kill somebody, so I'll just leave them. Goodbye. Goodbye. Let's also pay a visit to Calhoun Russell. If you remember, I think it was in the last episode, or maybe the one before that, we found a note in the acting theater. Uh, it was a love letter from Calhoun Russell to Doris Fletcher. Apparently they had a relationship. Calhoun, tell me about your relationship with Doris Fletcher. Oh, Doris. Cold fire and burning ice trapped in a perfect body. Our passion was as intense as it was brief. What an actress. How did you meet her? On a boat to France before the war. She was thinking about a career in Paris, and I was eager to try French gastronomy. We both returned disappointed. I expect you've seen her on stage, too. She really is the best actress of her generation. Such frailty and such strength at the same time. I hope she'll play again soon. She's been away for too long. You sound surprisingly sad. Have you regrets? I think of her as a divine dish. Ew. I'm glad I was able to taste it. But I regret I could only get a bite of her mystery. You really loved her, then? She fascinated me, Dr. Reed. I can't imagine what she must have endured through her life to reach such a level of emotion and sensibility. It's really weird, Russell, to look at everything through the lens of food. Please don't do that, especially personal relationships and people. So, did you try the restaurant I recommended? Oh, yes. I can't thank you enough, my dear doctor. Exquisite, but expensive. But what is money made for, if not for little pleasure? Why did you have to say that so weird? Don't you think your money could be better spent in these difficult times? Your words hurt, doctor. I thought you and I were friends. But since you ask, I'm rich enough to finance my passions and various charities across the city. Hmm. Perhaps my words were too harsh. No, they weren't. Please forgive me if I've upset you. Oh, no harm done. After I die, all my fortune will go to the suffering people of the East End. Until then, I aspire to live the most pleasant life possible. Oh, you're such a good person. Ah, well, I've already shared my thoughts about rich people giving to charity. Won't go into that again. Unlocked a hint? Anything new to talk about or just more XP? 
Just more XP. Goodbye. Actually, hold on a second. Now that we're like so high level, I may. I wonder if we can get better things in stores. Because I'm still looking for that freaking white phosphorus. And it seems like it's still. Wait, there it is. <gasps> I think I need three more. So that I don't think that's enough. But it's not even expensive. And I have 2,000 coin, apparently. Damn. Wow. I don't think I really need anything else. Well, I guess I always need opium. I still can't do anything new with Karina Billow, the new vampire. Yeah, there's so many hints that are, are undone for people, and I just don't know how to unlock them. Like, I've done basically all the side quests in the game that I possibly can. I must... I'm still persona non grata in the Ascalon Club. If I want to speak with Lord Redgrave, I'll have to improvise. Improvise? I was thinking I would just kill everybody in here. Whoa, look at those chairs! Just like people's clothes and faces sometimes don't load in properly, these chairs didn't load in properly. There we go. I had to like force it to load in by getting close to it. So strange, I just random objects get stuck. You are high level. fight. Pretty high level. Those Ekons have a lot of health. Redgrave! But they're not here. Find Redgrave. I'll have to improvise. What did that mean? Some of this blood, Lord Redgraves? Can I just gather it? <laughs> or what? Oh, wait a minute. Lord Redgrave's down there? When the hell did you get down there? Ho hold on, did that say... Oh my god, they're mesmerized level 20? That's four times what I've seen anybody be, and I'm pretty sure I can't even get above five. Pretty sure this is the max level. Good evening, Lord Redgrave. What are you doing here, traitor? I shall smite you for this audacity. I'm not here to bicker, Lord Redgrave. I can put an end to this epidemic. But I need your assistance to do so. Good. We've held out thus far. But the time has come to put an end to this crisis. Tell me, what do you need? The blood of William Marshall. The blood of William Marshall? Of my maker? Are you mad? This blood is the purest of all. My maker profited to me on the battlefield. 
I cannot hand it to you. Okay, I'll just kill you then. Stop this farce. Marshall never was your maker. I have no idea how you acquired his blood, but I need it now. I see. Well, in that case, <laughs> given the gravity of the situation, I suppose I can spare you a drop. Thank you, my lord. If you manage to save this city, you'll prove yourself a veritable servant of the crown. So Godspeed, Dr. Reed. Our fate lies wholly in your hands. They folded like a wet paper bag. I was just like, this is a farce. And they're like, okay, sure. Yeah, here's the blood. You're right. I think that's a pretty good place to end this episode. So that is... Obviously, that was part of the main quest, but I'm also done with really all the stuff that I can do for side quests actively. I still have three side quests left, but they're not really things that I can really pursue specifically. Like this one, for example, with Clarence Crossley. Proving the existence of vampires, I just need to find leaflets, pamphlets, books, articles, and whatnot, and I don't know where they actually are. So that's just something I'm going to have to hope I come across. But in the third part of your father's testament, I still don't know about that. The main quest is going to take me into the Pembroke Morgue, though, which I was thinking, although unlikely, could possibly have the next letter. So I'll just look around in the meantime for that. And the only other one is the Braille Notes for Mason Swanborough. Also, again, just got to hope I come across them. So, really, that's it for the side quests. So I hope you enjoyed so far, and when I return, I'm going to head to either Jeffrey McCollum up here at the cemetery, or see if I can find some insulin in the morgue. <laughs>